brought me through your grace and mercy brought me through I'm living this moment because of you I want to thank you and praise you to your grace and mercy brought me through. We're going to be praying at this time. Lord, we are grateful that you have spared our lives to see this day. We come, Lord God, praying for your leading and direction as we study your words. We recognize, Lord God, that as we have come this evening, God, that indeed you have been good to us. Lord, we thank you for having taken us throughout the day. And as we come there, God, help us, Lord, that we'll be able to focus on your word. And there, God, help us to be in tune with your spirit so that, God, as we study, that we can be edified, Lord God. We pray, God, for those who will be joining us physically as well as online. We pray for a special covering right now. We thank you, God, for those who have been joining us faithfully online. We pray that you'll reveal yourself to those who don't know you, that they might come to worship you in spirit and in truth. I pray, God, for those persons who have not been coming like they should. And Lord, they'll take stock and God, they'll seek, seek to make amends. For God, indeed, as we come and study your word, Lord, we'll grow stronger in you. I pray for your blessing upon some persons who are feeling down and depressed right now. I pray that you'll minister to their spirits right now, Lord God. I place them in your hands, Lord God. Those who might be feeling sick in their bodies, lay your hand upon them, Lord God. For you are still a healer. And God, we have sing more than once in song, Lord that you are healing Jesus. Minister healing to someone right now, Lord Jesus. Somebody might just be feeling weak in body. Lord, renew strength tonight. God, I pray that you'll restore hope. And dear God, just be exalted among us because you are God. Have your own way, Lord, as we continue to lean upon your everlasting arms. We give you thanks and we continue to wait upon you in Jesus' precious name. Praise the Lord Jesus. I'm going to be inviting you to turn your Bible's with me to Isaiah chapter 40. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Isaiah chapter 40. He's worthy to be praised. I'm going to be reading from verse 18 to verse 27. Isaiah chapter 40. Reading from verse 18 to verse 27. To whom then will he lighten God? Or what likeness will he compare unto him? The workman melted a graven image, and the goldsmith spread it over with gold and cast it silver chains. He that is so impoverished that he have no oblation chooseth a tree that will not rot. But he seeketh unto him a cunning workman to prepare a graven image that shall not be moved. Have ye not known? Have ye not heard? Have it not been told to you from the beginning? Have not ye understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the habitation thereof are as grass uppers. He stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwelling, that bringeth the princes to nothing, he maketh the judges of the earth as vanity. Yea, they shall not be planted. Yea, they shall not be sown. Yea, their stock shall not take root in the earth. And he shall also blow upon them, and they shall wither. And the whirlwind shall take, away, shall take them away as stubble. To whom then will he lighten me? Or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high, and behold who hath created these things, 
that bringeth out their host by number. He calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, not one faileth. We'll stop at the 27th verse. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. I'd like to invite our pastor, Pastor Barbara Brissett, to come at this time. Praise the Lord Jesus. You may be seated. Praise the name of the Lord. He's worthy to be praised. Bless the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Thanking Minister Drisdale for opening and welcome everyone. And I need a special prayer tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel that I'm under attack. But to God be the glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Nothing is impossible if we only believe. In here is very hot. Help us, Lord. <laughs> I'm welcoming those who have joined us online. It's always nice to have you, and remember that you are free to ask your question. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Nobody has anything for us to inquire into. Always ask that we think about what we read or meditate on, and then... We will have a discussion. Well, it's not happening, but it needs to happen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to turn our Bibles for the reading. Drawn from the book of Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 20. And we are going to read together. Amen. Sixth chapter of Ephesians. Praise the Lord Jesus. You may stand for the reading of God's word. From verse 6. Sorry, Ephesians 6 from verse 10. Are we ready? Praise the Lord. Let's go. Finally, Finally my, my brethren, be strong, strong in the Lord, Lord and in the, the power, power of his, his might. Put, put on the whole armor of God. God that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that he may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for, and for me, me that, utterance that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Verse 20. For which I am an ambassador in bonds 
and therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Praise the Lord Praise Jesus. Lord. You may be seated. I don't know why I'm not feeling good and then this music is so loud and pray for me. Amen. We want to focus on a thought, having done all to stand. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I love the word all. Having done all to stand. Amen. We have to be careful how we present the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and the church. You know, in witnessing, in preaching, we just have to be careful the pictures we paint while we are witnessing. Yes, we all paint pictures, not physically, but what we say, people get a picture, an image. Praise the Lord Jesus. So if we are not careful, people can be misguided, yes. hallelujah, and misled. Yes. You know, they see something that, that we don't want them to see because of how we present the gospel and the church. Praise the Lord Jesus. Lord. They may come to believe and they can, can stop me if I'm wrong, but people may come to believe that all the challenges are gone and that temptations are things of the past and they are sitting now on cloud nine once they come to the church. You get the picture? What do we mean by cloud nine? I always hear that saying, I decide to use it. In, in your, what, what is cloud nine? Right, that's a nice way of putting it. Everything is just fine, just splendid. Is that true? <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, I give you thanks. That's not true. So from experience, we know that this is not so. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. This is not so at all. Once you have accepted the gospel, you have switched sides. You have changed loyalty. Hallelujah. Are you thinking they're ever going to give up? Hmm? Satan is out to get you back. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, what can be done about this? This is a dilemma you are in. So, what can be done? What can you do? Give me one word. Oh, Jesus. There's noise in the environment, so I'm not hearing my head. You said pray, all right. You always pray. Huh? Sister Lenise was saying stand. Stand, all right. And I was saying fight. Fight, yes, thank you. Fight. Hallelujah. Yes. There are times we have to fight. Hallelujah. And fighting involves... The whole man, inside out. Some of us are not good fighters naturally, but spiritually, we ought to be good fighters. So fight, hallelujah. I love that answer, honestly. Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. I did not even see that when my thing fell. <laughs> it gone way around back. Sorry, I have found it. Okay. As Christians, as saved people, we fight. Yes, hallelujah. 
But the Bible tells us that the weapons of our warfare of, are not carnal. That means they're not natural. This carnal doesn't mean this is called scrimmage or something like that. It means they are not natural weapons. Hmm? They're not carnal. But they are mighty through God. Hallelujah. To the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. And, and stronghold is not something you break through easily. It, it is very fortified. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 to 5. Paul said to Timothy, sorry, what we just said a while ago. Now in 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5, says what we just said. Paul said to Timothy in 1 Timothy 6, 12, fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. Praise the Lord Jesus. We need to lay hold. Thank you, Jesus. Speaking about himself, in 2 Timothy 4, 7, that's Paul, he said, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. So each of us, whether new convert or old convert, male or female, each of us need to do what? Learn how to fight. And when you are fighting, fight to win. Hallelujah. In the natural fight, there are tactics. Hallelujah. And skills. That you can develop over time. It won't come overnight, but it comes over time. Hallelujah. And so it is in the spiritual. Amen. <coughs> Sorry. Verse 13 of the scripture we have read, or we call it foundation scripture. gives a recommendation. Amen. It says, take unto you the whole armor of God. Not just a piece of the armor, but the whole armor of God that you will be able to withstand in the evil day. Having done all to stand. Praise the Lord. As I mentioned earlier, we need to focus on the word all. all. Having done all. Some of us have been doing it, but not all. Just, just some of what is required. This is specific. If just, for example, my head is protected. I remain vulnerable and exposed. Yeah. Huh? Which, which, which creature we have? Just look about the head. Ostrich. Hide the head and the whole body is left out there. We, don't, we need to forget about the ostrich mentality. That's right. Amen? Can't just protect the head. Amen. Remain vulnerable remain exposed. Yes. Let's see what, what comprises the whole armor. Because the Bible says, take unto you. It's something you've got to choose yes. to embrace. Yes. Take unto you the whole armor. Yes. Amen. The first consideration of the armor is truth. Truth. He said, have your loins girt about with truth. Truth is broad. Truth may be applied to 
the gospel that we have believed. I don't feel it's just speak the truth and speak it ever. We learned that at school. Cause it what it will. No, the truth is what is embedded in the doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, loins. So, a question for you. It might be simple, but let's look at it. What part of the physical body is the loin? Huh? Somebody said the waist. Anybody has anything different from that? You all agree that it is a waist? Huh? The what? From the waist down. Man is up, you know. <laughs> it's really from the waist up to the rib cage. Yes. There are some things we don't think we know it, and we see them in books and all of that, and the commentary. In, in, in fact, my, my study Bible at home, I think it's emphasizing the waist. Amen. But if you look up a definition, you'll see that is that part between the hip bone and the ribs. So if you're going to gird, you need more than a belt that people are emphasizing. It will be more like a girdle. What do you think? And not just a girdle. There, there's some, there are some that I'm talking that start from here. We call them corset. You know corset? Nobody here knows corset. You heard the term. People, when they take long to dress, we're asking them, they're putting on the corset. Because it's from up here, we, you know, and zip up and hook up and really keep you together and give you the figure. All right? Pray for me, you know, my head not too right today. Mm. As I said, some commentaries refer to a belt to do the girting. And however, truth is required here. What the Bible says about truth, anything comes to mind in the scripture? The Bible talks about truth. Truth will set you free. Psalm 51, it says God desires truth in the inward part. Yes, anything else about truth? Excuse me. One came to me forcefully when I was doing my notes. Taking from Proverbs 23, 23. Let's see if we find that. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. Proverbs 23, 23. Amen. Buy it the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. The part I like to focus on is Buy the truth and sell it not. I always ponder that. If all you're going to buy it if somebody's not selling it. But but it's, you know, you I mean get it, but don't get rid of it. Amen. 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 Embrace truth. Make truth your companion. Live in truth. It's more than talking the truth. But don't you ever get rid of that. If you have a package, make sure truth is in your package. Sell it not. Don't get rid of it. So once you have acquired truth, keep it. Fight to protect it. Protect it from contamination. Truth may be so mixed up that you can't even discern it. Help us, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Satan is out to deceive you and will always attack with things that look better and sound better. How, how is, has anybody ever come to you with something that look better than what you have and sound better than what you have? Huh? If you hear that, 
all those big houses are all about. A day is coming when it just can't get one. How that sound? Huh? Sound very good. Yes. Some people come with that as a doctrine, you know. Oh, yes. One, one young man told me that he don't have to make any house because all of the sin you know, are going to belong to him. Lord Jesus. Amen. My hope is not for down here. Right. They can take it because they're gone. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, so it look better and sound better. But when that confronts you, all you've got to do is go back to the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What the word says. What the word says. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The Holy Spirit will guide you, the scripture says, into all truth. John 16, 30. Amen. I'm always impressed by what Pilate said to Jesus. During his trial, we know that Jesus was brought before Pilate. To Pilate's question, Art thou a king then? Jesus said, I came into the world that I should bear witness of the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate said unto him, what is truth? Amen. But I don't see where Jesus answered. John 16, 13. Now I find truth very difficult to define. I heard my late husband with a de definition. And I sometimes say it myself. I don't know where God is from, but he would say truth is the evidence of him that is true. <laughs> yes. He said it. I never asked him where he got it. Amen. So, this world, this world which we live in, I just found, found that this word came to me, that it is so distorted. You know, that there's no order to it. This world I'm talking about, Yes, very, very distorted that there is scant regard for truth, no matter how it is obvious. It's staring him in the face, yet they don't care about truth. Some people just want to know that they accept something, they're attached to something. Hallelujah. Salvation is more than an attachment, <laughs> although you ought to be attached. But attached to what? Amen. So, we have looked at truth as a piece of the armor that you should put on constantly. Praise the Lord. According to your Bible, what is the second piece of this armor? Breastplate of righteousness. Amen. Now the breastplate covers the upper body here, especially the heart. Amen. Watch your heart. Amen. Satan attacks the heart, which is described as the seat of emotions. What is the breastplate then? That's God's righteousness. Not your righteousness. We sing it. Dressed in his righteousness alone. <laughs> Faultless to stand before the throne. So that breastplate, that righteousness, protects the heart. Bless the Lord Jesus. We talk about the heart, we're not talking about the physical organ now. But there, there's just something, I'm never able to figure it out. The heart, 
the soul, the spirit. Have you figured that out? When you figure it out, let me know. The heart, the soul, the spirit. Jesus deals with those unseen parts of man. Remember I said we're not talking about the physical heart. You can always see that. Once I say you couldn't touch your heart, but it's not true again. People really, really operate on the heart, you know, and put in valves and all of that. Amen. We're talking about that spiritual part of you that reaches out to God, that longs for God, and that God deals with. We can look into that some more and share. Do you know more about the heart? Nobody? All right? But that's where Satan likes to attack and to sow his seed. Because um, it, it, it deals with the emotions, the emotional part of you. And sometimes, as Christians, we get beside ourselves. Not true? We say things we shouldn't say. We imagine things we shouldn't imagine. And all of that. But the Bible says, guard your heart because out of it are the issues of life. Not just natural life, but spiritual life as well. So that's number two. What is number three? Huh? I didn't hear that. Did you answer? Your feet? Yes. So, that would be your shoes for your protection. Isn't that so? We need shoes. Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. This indicates readiness. Amen. Readiness to spread the gospel. We're talking about evangelism. If you want to grow in Christ, you can't just sit down by yourself. You've got to tell somebody else about it. And the more you tell people, the more you get equipped to tell more. Amen. It drives you to go and study the scripture, especially when there's contradiction and controversies. Praise the Lord Jesus. So, going to put on the gospel shoe is more than a revival song. Praise the Lord Jesus. Let's thank the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. So your feet must be shod with the preparation of the gospel. Readiness to evangelize. Amen. Put on the gospel shoe. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Number four. Everybody talks about this one. The shield of faith. Hallelujah. There was a time when I was focusing on Shield and buckler. Who remember? Yes, the buckler. <laughs> you all know what that is? That's the one that you hold for yourself, the hand shield. Amen. Sometime in a war, you have someone else protecting you with the shield. Amen. We all need a shield of faith. If you are like me, sometimes your faith seems to be getting weak. Or, or what it does, it slips from high to low. Whatever. You believe God sometimes and then you don't believe him again. Start to help yourself. We all need a shield of faith. Because the enemy attacks from all fronts. Amen. The Lord. On the Christian journey, 
there will be setbacks. It's not just a steady growth. Hallelujah. Sometimes you want to get back almost where you begun. There are many temptations, but the Bible said all of them come unto man. Yes. Hallelujah. Some day look on some people and it looks so vibrant and strong and you wish you were like those people. But you need to take a look where they are coming from. Hallelujah. It wasn't a steady climb. Amen. Sometimes they come right back down. <laughs> like I share my experience with you when I was trying to climb that tree. There were many times that I went back to the root. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says the shield protects us from all. All the fiery darts of the enemy. Yeah. Hallelujah. No matter what he's coming with, just a suggestion to the mind or something that you do, sometimes the enemy wants us to feel inadequate huh? and that we sin. Yes, sometimes you don't sin, you know. And they want to make you know that you sin and go and stir up even some old time things. Hallelujah. And have them in front of you. But we are here by God's grace. Amen. We are protected by the shield from all the fiery darts of the enemy. Amen. Hallelujah. And then we need a helmet of salvation. Protection for what now? The head, the mind. Same thing. The mind, the mind can carry you to where? The North Pole. And back. Amen. The mind is so powerful. It caused people to see somebody who died 40 years ago. The mind. You don't, you don't agree with me? Yes. yes, and you say, you say, the dopey. Lord, 40 years ago. Lord Jesus, so you need a helmet, protection from the head. and The mind, again, is something we can't see. Sometimes our imagination of what the mind is not right. But the mind is also protected. So we have got to watch what we hear and what you see. Amen? Amen. These are enemies that feed the mind, what you hear and what you see. I, I'm, I'm telling you, saints, I don't know, I've had some experiences that sometimes things can play havoc with your mind. What you think you see is that what you see. Let me share a simple story with you. I was living at a certain place, and probably it was a time like no shortage of water. So we'd go to the school tank to help ourselves with, with water. And this night, as I was about to step out of the gate, I saw like somebody dodging me behind the fence. And then I realized it couldn't be a person, so what would it be? And it was white, too. <laughs> yes, every time I have to step out, it step out, too. So, I said, Lord, have mercy. What is this? So, I decided that, well, man or ghost, I am going for the water. You know what it was? No, no, it wasn't a shadow. A white sheet you heard already on the fence. And it's set up for me every time it come out, it blow. Just a white sheet. We spread it, you know, them fences that cut. Yes. But my mind tell me 
that it was either man or doppy. Well, it was a sheet. Yes. There are some times we just, on the workplace or even the church, can draw up some things about other person. Eh? Imagine him pass when I greet me. Huh? And you start to think. Think. Say, you know, me did ask a favor. And we, the mind. But with the mind, we serve Christ too. Our minds have got to be in tuned. Hallelujah with this thing. That's why I tell you, I can't, I can't put a demarcation. Mind and spirit and soul. If you can't tell me when you arrive. Huh? What is the mind? What is the spirit? What is the soul? Anybody can help me here? I'm going to try to do some more research and see what they are saying. Anybody here knows? Talk about the mind of Christ. You have to have the mind of Christ. Huh? You can do your research and come, you know, to be make a nice discussion. See what you find. Amen. But the helmet is for the head, and it said also protects your mind. So you watch what you hear, what you believe, what you see. Now your conviction should be strong. If you are saved, you should know that you are saved. Who is going to know for you? Hallelujah. Know that you are saved. Believe it and embrace it. Hug it up. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We move on now to the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. If you are saved, you should have a good appetite for the Word. Amen. Now, I don't want us to reduce or narrow down the word to just the Bible. The Bible is a powerful book, isn't it? Amen. That's a written word. Hallelujah. The written word. Whatever, what other word you have? The what? Spoken word and what? The incarnated word. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> And who was that? Jesus. The Lord Jesus Christ. We are not focusing on the incarnated word tonight, which means the word made flesh. But some people talk about the word, you think you're just talking about from Genesis to Revelation. And some people put the Apocrypha in there to Apocrypha. Have you ever read that? The little us believe is some magic something about it. I actually have a Bible with Apocrypha in there. It's called the Intertestament. You know any of the books? I think I said some here already. Judith and Tobit and Bell and the Lion and those things. Years ago, I just used to, to read them and laugh. You know? Intertestament. But, but people believe that for the Maccabees that people talk about all the while, they were brothers, and they saved some of the natural history of Israel, they believe. But people generally talk about the Maccabees, that like it's just those alone. It's much more than that. You know, as I said earlier, Judith and Tobit and Bell and the Lion, those are the ones I'm recalling now. But don't mix up your mind about that. This has stood the test. And it is said that the King James Version is still the best version. I don't know. I really don't know. But don't narrow down the word to just that. Written word, we thank God for it. The spoken word should be based on the written word. You believe that? 
should never be neglected and underestimated. Hallelujah. God himself used the word to make something out of nothing. What am I talking about? Creation, he said, let there be light and there was light. Genesis 1, 3 to 9. Amen. Now, we have been equipped to stand. So we are told, put on is something that you have to do for yourself. Put on the whole armor. Don't leave out a piece. From head to toe. You're going to find it necessary. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Put it on so that you will be able to stand. The last clause of verse 14 says, having done all to stand. So we have got to examine ourselves to see if there are missing pieces. Amen. Sure you have on your helmet? Amen. Breastplate is in place. And what again? Your shoes and? I'm not hearing them. Shield of faith. Not even hearing. Helmet, okay. So a piece of the armor may not be missing. But I want to invite you to consider what condition is your helmet for example in huh will the enemy sword be able to to pierce the helmet what condition so i would advise us <coughs> excuse me to, to examine the pieces every day to see if they are in good condition. Amen. Are you wearing the right pair of shoes? You ever some people walk in some shoes yet because of style? Huh? Some of them walk like they have not me. Huh? Oh, we are not in this thing because of style. Amen. You know, they have some shoes they call walking shoes. And they are not cheap, you know. Right, Sister Walter? They are not cheap. Praise the name of the Lord. So, I'm going to put on the gospel shoe. But, but as I thought about these things, I said to myself, they are all symbolic. We don't want a real helmet. Although, you know, there's a religion that just wear a real helmet. Amen. Yes, when I know some of my friends not far from here, especially a special sister, the helmet she wore to church. Amen. And I know a religion, they really have a sword. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But these things are symbolic. God speaks to us over and over through symbol. They speak to our spiritual condition and protection. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Having, sorry, have we done all to stand? Think about that. Is there something that's left undone that should be done? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have turned the statement into a question. Have we done all to stand? Consider this. Hallelujah. What's your reaction when the things that are said about you are not so nice? Hmm? What does it 
do to your heart, to your mind, in your head? Huh? Does it do anything to you? Let's examine ourselves. Be honest or untruthful. Don't you vex sometimes? Don't you react sometimes? Verbally? Some people even fight. I don't know if I told you about we were going somewhere. We were way in the west. And we saw like a gathering. And we were told that one group should have an oatmeal meeting there. But something happened <laughs> that two people who should not be fighting were fighting right out there that they went for oatmeal. Huh? Yes? We have got to be careful. The devil, the devil wants us to fight, you know, the pastor and the deacon, the pastor and the evangelist, the ushers. The devil would love that. But in the name of Jesus... We're going to set up our banners. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes. Have we done all to stand? Ah, sometimes when I'm writing, my mind goes back to some scriptures. And you wonder how fitting these scriptures are in the theme, you know. But something came to me from the songs of Solomon. And people, people love to talk about love verses and this and that and the other. It's really Christ and the church, but we're not on that tonight. But as I sort of get a picture of this overall thing, you know, about putting on the whole armor of God. I, I went to the Songs of Solomon, chapter 2 and verse 15. Can you find it, please? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Go ahead. Take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines are tender grapes. Thank you. That means anything to you? Ah, tender grapes stick out for you. The little foxes. Here they are described, not the big pupa one or mama one, the little foxes. What they do? They spoil the vines. And that time the grapes just putting out. Huh? For our vines have tender grapes. So, Sometimes the attack is not from the big, matured, or so on. Amen? But from a source that you would not even think about. Amen? So, the little foxes have the ability to spoil the vine. Preventing, preventing it from maturing and bringing forth fruit for good use. Amen. So, what do I get from this? The small things. Let's all say small things. Small things, small things that do not get much attention have the capacity to create havoc in our spiritual lives. Amen. Don't have to be the big mountains. The small things. Has small things ever annoyed you yet? 
Don't we get annoyed over small things? Oh my God. Be honest. Amen. Small things. We don't pay them any mind. We are accustomed to them. But they're wreaking havoc. Stealing our spiritual stamina to make us worthless and useless. Bless the Lord Jesus. So I have here, watch your words, for example. Be careful of the things that you agree with or that you disagree with. You know that some people disagree against what the Bible says? You know that? Take, for example, the tenth in tithing. The Bible says it. And some people don't give a tenth. If it is small... Yes, but when it's big, it's too big for God. Huh? Amen? Creating havoc in our spiritual lives. May you take on the whole armor. If the mind is right, the action is going to be right. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to remind us that living for the Lord takes effort and determination. Amen. Effort and determination. Hallelujah. My head teacher. When I was going to school, always say, make the effort. And she was called Mother Effort. Make the effort. Never you say you can't. Hallelujah. Make the effort. Praise the name of the Lord. Although I know I can't do maths. You can't know. I can't do maths. And I was sorry the day, very, very sorry, when I went in the exam and I saw the math paper, I just asked to be excused. Or well, that's it? No, 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 that wasn't it. I did what I could. Well, there were two papers, one, one on another day. It was London, London, GC. And when I went and saw the second paper, I asked to be excused. And when the result came, had I stayed there and fool around, fool around, fool around, I would have passed. Because I got enough in the first paper that the doubling with the second paper would have brought it up to something. But I told myself, I can't do maths. Yet I didn't fail maths in college. I didn't fail research methods, which is heavy on maths. I made the effort. Praise the Lord Jesus. Because I told myself, I am not in those institutions to fail. I made the effort. So, if you can't do it for the, for, for the natural, how about the spiritual? The eh? Me have been married. And we're going backslide. That your program? Huh? Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. If I get a job, I have to go buy a lotto. Try me luck. I'll pray over it too before you buy it. Woo. Somebody who is close to me, we supposed to be a Christian in her church. She said she doesn't buy the gambling, whatever kind of gambling I have at her country. But she asked her daughter to buy it, 
and she prays. Glory to God. We have some serious kind of Christianity in this world, you know. Hallelujah. Yes. We have got to come clean and we come to God. Because he reads the secrets of our hearts. Amen. Put on the whole armor. That's a warning to us. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So living for the Lord takes effort. You don't just slide and, and get along like that. You have got to be determined and you make effort. Somebody might send you a lovely dress or something. But is it up to your standard? Now go wear it because we get it. Huh? We are the one that fits you well and that meets the standard. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Everything goes, you know. See, I write it, be careful of the things you agree with or even disagree. Amen? Sometimes we disagree with things that we should agree with and vice versa. May God help us. So, the Bible tells us when they put on the whole armor, whether it's heavy or it suits you or it doesn't suit you, put it on. It may feel uncomfortable for the newcomer. Yes, very uncomfortable at first. How am I going to church every Sunday and midweek? And I can't wear this and I can't wear that. Amen? So you feel uncomfortable at first. But you'll get used to it. Believe me, you'll get used to it. You'll get used to people greeting you, praise the Lord, instead of good morning. Remember somebody once said to me, that's how you greet each other. And, and I, I even tell the people um, in the ministry, praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, you are so accustomed to it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Put on whole armor. Without the armor, you are exposed and you are vulnerable. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. You, you will be a misfit in some groups, in some crowds, in some places. Hallelujah. But being a misfit in the world fits you for the kingdom of the almighty God. Now I thought about what people would probably call the requirements of being a Christian. And, and we find some people shy away from the church because they tell themselves they can't make it. They can't live up to it. Amen? Some people become afraid of accepting salvation. One of the cheap fear Tell me what it is to backslide. They tell it, yes, they don't want to start and backslide. Oh, Jesus. That's exactly what I have here underlined. But I want to say to somebody with the, with the hearing of my voice tonight, be not afraid. Be assured that the one who saves you is able to keep you from falling. Amen. He has already made provision. Amen. Made provision for that. Your armor is ready, waiting for you. Yes. It suits you. It, it was designed for me. Amen. There's a special 
designed for you. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. It's like going to the tailor and you get your suit tailor made. It's designed for you. It's not too long. It's not too short. It's not too heavy. It's designed for you. God has already made provision. Ready waiting. So, put on the whole armor. Do not say, boy, we can't duck good, you know, something and need anything for the head. Huh? And I know that I'm not going to witness to evangelize, so I don't need the shoes. Amen. You don't need it today, you'll need it tomorrow. Praise God. Whole armor. Shall we praise the Lord Jesus? Shall we praise the Lord? Any question? Do we have any questions? Yes, sis. Question, are you were just yawning? <laughs> Anybody has anything to say? I don't like the silence in, in, in Bible study. Any comment, any question? And uh, when somebody witnessed to me, I was one that shy away from this Sunday morning church, and <laughs> I couldn't see myself getting ready. I always said I have to work from Monday to Saturday, and I'm tired, and I just couldn't help myself. But as I said, when you started, you just find yourself start to fit in. It becomes a part of you, as I said, it's your mind. So when it's Sunday morning, it's like, your whole mind is knowing that getting up, I'm getting myself ready for church. You know, I need to be in Bible study until it will just becomes a part of you. Yes. Uh, yeah. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else? Nobody else has anything to say. I'm wondering if this little sharing... Made it made sense. Amen. We're going to turn to the book of Jude for our closure. Verse 24. We're going to read that together. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Jude yes. 24. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Thank you. Hallelujah. Now unto him who is able. So what are you worrying about? Amen. He's able to keep you from falling. And then finally to present you. Lord, I thank you for that. We have faults right now. But God has made a provision also. To deal with the falls. That's why I should not miss service. Amen. Every service is designed to get you closer to whom God wants you to be. Amen. So, when you are presented, you'll be faultless. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So we thank God for that. And we continue to serve him one day at a time. Hallelujah. Stop hauling the sins behind you. 
that God has forgiven you for long ago? Huh? Where you go back to pick them up or dig them up, whatever, and to have them dragging. When you are forgiven, you are forgiven. And the same thing with, with your relationship, whether within your family, biological family, or the family of God. When you forgive, you forgive. Praise the name of the Lord. So we give God thanks tonight. I'm here standing, but I'm swinging. <laughs> oh God, I give you thanks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What should we talk about next week if there's a next week? Nothing? What? Lord's Supper? We should have Lord's Supper. <laughs> you want to hear about the Lord's Supper? Well, I think it's time for us to have a Lord's Supper. I've been thinking about it. Praise the Lord Jesus. It's, it's now the fourth month of the year. And we should have Lord's Supper. Praise the Lord. But we always announce it. Like two weeks prayer. Yes, so we, we'll still do that. Pray about it. Some people don't take Lord's Supper, you know. You know that? They're afraid. Amen. I have been reading around the last meal or whatever Jesus said to his disciples. And I was thinking about Judas. You know, when he said, one of you is going to betray me. Amen. Even Judas said, Lord, is it I? Did he say it? They all said it. And Jesus said, the one to whom I give the sop, dip the thing in the thing. And, and even when Judas got that, it meant nothing. I've been thinking about you know, I was reading around the scriptures concerning the Lord's Supper. Yeah? You hear someone going to betray me, and they say, he was plain, the one to whom I give this up. And you get it. You see? He wasn't wearing the armor at all. So something entered in. Either up here or here. Money, the Bible says money, you know. You have to be careful of the love of money. You see? The love of money, not money itself. The love of money. Amen. Some people, when they hear how much you're paying, contract, contract killing, you wonder if life is really valuable. Huh? May God help us. We really need to preach and to testify, you know. People need to be changed. I mean, definitely changed that, that when Satan is coming, what, what, what Jesus said, the prince of this world cometh, but he has nothing in me. Nothing, nothing was in Jesus for, for this thought to latch on to. But sometimes we are not cleansed, we are not washed as we ought to. And then these things find an attachment somewhere. Huh? Yeah, you are clean, but not all. It's what was already in that man. Love of money, greed. I've got to be careful. Hallelujah. What's that? Money come what? Money become used to him. Oh, no use, not because, well, we know what happened. But he was a treasurer. Be careful of the office you are taking. Yes. When Jesus said, what you do, do it quickly. The other disciples thought Jesus was saying to get something for the meal. Huh? But, son of perdition. And I've been, I've been studying about him too. But there was this prophecy that says, his bishopric 
let another take. So Judas was ordained to be a bishop. Just like Paul, Peter, Paul wasn't there yet, Andrew, all of them, his bishop prick, let another take. Amen. Some of us sit on in church and feel we are indispensable. God will always have somebody to preach in, in the pulpit. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Nothing takes God by surprise. You saying something, Salanese? I thought I heard her speak. No? Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is where we stop. Praise the Lord. Can we all stand in the presence of the Lord? How many of us are here tonight? We need to double. We're going to start to have Bible study with singing and clapping and testimony. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. We're going to ask people to get a thought and share it. Amen? Come with your thought to share and give you a minute or two. Praise the name of the Lord. God is, God is good. God is good. God is good. God is good. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench, sing. <laughs> Bread of heaven. Feed me till I want no more. Here's my And make me whole Like the woman at the well I was seeking For things that could not satisfy But then I heard my Savior calling, draw from my well that never shall run dry. Here's my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In your prayers, remember me. I know I'm not supposed to eat cheese, and I had some cheese. <laughs> and it's bothering me, but I'm here. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Sister Walton, please come and pray the closing prayer. Lord Jesus, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord. Let us pray. 
O oh, most righteous and ever loving Father, we give you thanks, Lord Jesus, for taking us here. Hallelujah. Taking us here. Thank you for the words that was broken unto us, O oh God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We have studied and we have heard, oh my God, to put on the full armor of God. Lord Jesus, help us. Bless us. Keep us. Help us, oh Lord, to be where you want us to be. Oh Jesus, have your way in our lives. Bless and keep those who are sick, Lord Jesus. I'm asking you tonight to touch and to keep and to cover. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Cover, I pray, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, now we are going on our separate ways. Give us journey in mercies, oh, God, and cover us. Keep us safe to be here again, oh, God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah.